Hey, hey, I am really glad that you're here today for this version of Content Creation Made Easy. You know, this podcast is all about simplifying things, opening your mind to different ways of doing content, uh, thinking about different avenues of using your content. And that is why today I have invited Precious Rogers on. Now you can call her a Pinterest marketing expert and ad specialist, but what she really is, is a Pinterest badass. She yes. is the CEO of the Pinning Oasis, and that's a boutique Pinterest marketing agency. What, Pre what Presh does is she helps online coaches, service providers, and content creators pimp their Pinterest to drive, pimp Pinterest to drive more people and profit to their business. And without Pinterest ads, if you don't want Pinterest ads, like Presh has lots of strategies for you. We're going to talk about those today. But the fun thing about Presh is she's got this whole high energy vibe. And like, listen to the rest of her bio, everyone. When she's not giving out high energy, good laughs or sunshine vibes, you can find her sipping her favorite drink of the day, dancing around for fun or watching her latest Netflix binge. That is a message that lands and has personality. And I'm, I just want to point that out, Presh, because I'm always talking about like stand out in your messaging and you really did that. So hello, Presh. So glad you're here. Thank you for having me. And thank you so much for that, because I think we sometimes get lost and try to sound so like professional and whatever that is, I, I say, no, right. like it's, it's really what you think it is. And we forget to kind of show off who we are. Mm -hmm. And I know I like to work with people who I can connect with, who I feel like are good energy people mm -hmm. and who I have something in common with. So people say like, Oh, I, like, what are you watching on Netflix or something like that? Cause they know that I love me a good binge. I'm always watching TV. So it's always good to like show off your personality. So what is your latest Netflix binge? Selling Sunset season oh. five, I think it is. Yeah, I really love just, I mean, it's a good mix of, I love watching like reality TV shows for like yeah. the, the trashy TV, but then I also really like watching real estate stuff, even though I'm not even like into real estate, but I just think it's cool. Like, I don't know, watching these houses and be like, I'm going to have a bathroom like that one day. Like yeah. I'm just planning out my house. It's like yeah, my Pinterest yeah. board, but on TV. <laughs> it's so like your it's mental good, Pinterest board. Yeah. It's a good mix of like both of those things together. So. I love that. I like to go back and, and binge old things that came on before people had cell phones. So I've been watching Seinfeld, which I watched in the nineties, but like watching it again now, I'm like, none of these stories could happen now because we all have cell phones. Like none of the confusion could happen. Cause we would just be like, beep, beep, boop, boop. Okay. I'll meet you there 10 minutes later. It's just yeah. so funny to but me. But I love nineties. So I watched a show called living single. Um, oh yeah religiously like that is my background <laughs> show if I'm just like one like quick brain break I'll put on living single and it's like so quick because it's only like you know 30 minute shows, minutes shows so yeah like it's quick and, and no commercial <laughs> so I get through like the whole entire series really quickly and I'd be like dang I'm already on season five like I guess I'll be starting over soon <laughs> I, I try to take breaks in between but it's like it's just really good background music now but yeah Super. seeing those little things it's like we had really great shows back in the 90s like yeah. all without so. cell phones all without texting yeah mm -hmm. so let's start talking about Pinterest because that's what we are going to unpack for people today can you tell us a little bit about how you came to be a Pinterest expert yeah. So I started off in 2019 as a virtual assistant. So I, you know, wanted to travel and just work from anywhere. And that's like the program I call on, I joined was like work from anywhere or whatever. And I was like, okay, I want to do that. Like, I don't want to be in nine to five anymore. I'm just going to travel. Mind you, this is 2019 before we knew it was going to happen <laughs> in 2020. And so started my business, became a VA, um, my very first client, um, she was an influencer and also had like a travel blog and she knew that she got a lot of traffic from Pinterest, but she also knew that she wasn't using, utilizing it correctly. Like she didn't even have a business account. So she asked me if I could help her with that. And I'm a VA. So I'm saying yes to everything. Like, yeah, I mean, I'll figure it out. Enough. Like, and then the, the program that I was in uh, called 90 day VA, it had a portion in there or a module in there about being a Pinterest manager. So I'm like, okay, I have this and I'll probably like do another little course and I should be able to work this out. Um, so that's how I got into it. And from there, it kind of like exploded into like me wanting to know more about Pinterest, me seeing that like, this is a side that's kind of untapped with people actually doing a lot of like um, you know, everybody back then was like Instagram and social media, things like that. And I'm like, well, I'm going to try out Pinterest and see where it takes me. And 
like after in 2020 but the beginning of 2021 is when I decided to do completely Pinterest because in 2020 I was Pinterest and Instagram mm-hmm. and at the end of 2020 I was like I'm just going to completely go all in on Pinterest and it's been amazing ever since. Talk about leaning into your lane, like getting in yes. the lane and driving. I love that. I talk about that all the time with my clients because they want to be everywhere and do everything and speak to everybody. But when you got, is that when you found that your business just kind of exploded for you when you just got into that lane and started driving? Yeah, because it came, it became a different type of business. Like I have a lot more ease and flow like I want because with, when I was doing both, I had, you know, two different types of clients and I was still doing like Instagram and Pinterest mostly, but I still had some admin clients because I was still like the VA. And so I had to grow from being like the VA only or being a VA to being like just social media with Pinterest and Instagram. And then it's like, okay, I feel overwhelmed and burnt out. And like, I'm doing so much to make the amount that I was making. And so I knew I wanted a way to like, cause in 2020, that year of like the holidays, I don't even think I really took a big break or anything like that. And I was like, okay, I want something that gives me more ease and more like flow. So um, pivoting to just Pinterest really has helped with that because I was able to like create the kind of type of um, services that I want to create, even though I was really scared when I did like my first, I call them VIB days instead of VIP oh, yeah. days. Um, Cause B, a B is for badass, a very important badass. <laughs> and when I leaned into that in 2021 is really when I was able to see like what I was possible for me and just really trust myself. I love that. A um, couple of questions about a couple of things I think that are so important in what you just said. Number one, you were like, yes, I can do this. And then you just set about to learning it. Like you just trusted that you could figure it out and you didn't need like a $1,500 course and you didn't need an MBA and you didn't need, like you just figured it out. Right. And I think, yeah, that so a oh. mistake that I think that's a mistake a lot of us make, which is we're like, oh, I need to get a whole certification in this thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. My first year, um, I just figured it out. Yeah. I didn't invest yeah. in something until, um, 2020 summer, 2020. Um, I came across, um, a program from somebody I found on Pinterest, mm-hmm. but in, I mean, she's a Pinterest mentor. So of course I found her on Pinterest. Sure. Um, and then she opened the doors to her. She has a, a, had a Pinterest management, like a manager program so specifically for Pinterest managers. Um, and I got into her program and I would say that definitely helped me elevate for in 2021. Yeah. Um, so like the, the second half of 2020 is when I was really getting into like building out the packages that I wanted, the services that I was thinking about doing, kind of like thinking about how I want my future to look. Yeah. And that's why in 2021, I was like, okay, I got to just really go all into this. But yeah, yeah, definitely. I started out just like figuring it out on my own, like all the free things and, you know, having clients who were open to allow me to like figure it out. So that was a good thing too. Yeah. The second thing I heard in your in your comments was it was super important for you to kind of wade through all of the bullshit until you, but always keeping your future self in mind. Like I want this to be easier. And that's why I do this podcast because I want content creation to be easier for people. And I think that it's been made really overly complicated. So I love when we can have somebody on who's like figured out a way in for herself and then can share some of those pieces of advice with us. So thank you for like speaking to those two important things that happen when we're growing. They're really growing pains. Oh yeah. I just really, I can't even look back or think back to like how (laughs) I used to market myself. And, you know, you hear all these things and you try to do all these things and it's like, it's not necessary. It's really yeah, not. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I totally know. All right. So before we get started on Pinterest, let's talk about the kind of person who would be a good fit for Pinterest. You have to have content. So you, probably people listen to this podcast. Um, I always say, I if you don't have content, then you have nowhere to drive the Pinterest traffic to. So Pinterest is a traffic driver. Um, majority, 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 <laughs> Uh, a traffic driver and um though we have things that keep people on the platform like idea pins now it's still a very good place to find that balance of keeping people on the platform and using your pin images that you create to drive people to your website where you have other content that you've already created so if you aren't creating content where are the people going to go so pinterest won't be really a good fit for you so that's really mostly it. Like you have to have content. Now content can be in the the form of like products and things like that, but also 
um, looking at it differently? Like, even if you are a product seller, are you doing things like blogs or things like that to bring people on your website to learn about you in different ways? And before people think like, oh, I don't want to write a blog. It's definitely different ways that you can do blogging nowadays. It doesn't have to be like sit down and write. You can literally do videos and things like that to turn them into like brand content or podcasts, obviously. Right. So you can bring people, do you want to bring them back? Does Pinterest bring them back to your website and maybe your YouTube channel or your Instagram, or do you just want people to go back to your website? So yeah, in 2022, I recommend just your website. Um, you can drive people to other places, but you can only claim your website. Now you used to can claim your YouTube, you used to can claim your Instagram, but now you only can claim your website and Pinterest is going to prioritize your claim website. So it's best to send people to your website. So like for me, um, all my YouTube videos are on my website as blog posts. So I have the video at the top um, and then I get the transcript and my virtual assistant turns into a blog post so that whoever comes from Pinterest, they have two options. They can watch the video or they can read the blog. And then with that, it gives me, I can always update the blog to anything that's more current or any little tweaks that have changed. Um, but the video will still probably be still mostly relevant. Mm -hmm. Um, and then they can still from there subscribe to my YouTube channel, um, if they want to, or things like that. So you can still like give call to actions for what you want them to do next, but now you're still able to one, if they're coming to your website, you can track them. If you're doing any type of paid marketing for later, things like that, right. you can have pop-ups that can have them sign up for your email list. So you have more leverage sending them to your website. Right. So if somebody's listening to this and they already feel overwhelmed because you and I are both doing a lot, like we have images on our website, we have videos on our website, we have the, the videos turned into transcripts and then links to other things, but it doesn't have to be that complicated at first, especially if you don't have a team. Right. So how could, right. what's like, what are some things that people do when they get started before they like weigh themselves down with like, well, Jen and pressure <laughs> doing it this way? Like what could be simpler for them? Yeah. So it really, if you can give me an example of like, maybe like the type of content they have, and then we can kind of play it from yeah, there. That's a great, okay. That's a great question. So say somebody has a written blog, they have been putting time in and they spend a lot of time on a blog and maybe they like are able to repurpose it in different ways, but they are not using Pinterest to drive people back to that blog, like a static blog. Yeah. So one, if you have a static blog, you should definitely be on Pinterest because that's kind of like the easiest way. That's what most people think about when they think Pinterest, they're, they're like, oh, I don't have like a blog or whatever. So the simplest thing for you to do next is actually create your pin images. And maybe for each blog post, I say do like three to five pin images um, and then schedule them out to go on Pinterest from there. It shouldn't take you that long keep your pin image templates or designs very simple. Don't overdo it. <laughs> That's what people, it takes people long because they have these complicated designs that they want to be super, super, you know, Photoshop or Adobe Photoshop ready. And it's like, it does not have to be that strategic. You just need to make mm -hmm. something that's clean, clear, still eye catching, but you can have eye catching and be simple. Okay. So do you want, when you're thinking about those images for Pinterest, are we talking, like, think about your brand colors? Do you want pictures of yourself? Do you want stock pictures? Do you want nature pictures? Like, what are we talking there? You want picture, you want mostly the text to say what is going to be on the other side of the pin image. So you don't want to use, Pinterest doesn't, um, in their best practices, they say that pictures of like yourself don't really work as well as just like either stock photos, um, mostly take out faces, take out faces mostly. It's not like yourself because people are not there for you. They're sure. there for the content. So if you have something, cause how I look at it is if I see a picture of somebody in a nice outfit, maybe I'm going to save that to like a fashion um, board. That might not be nothing about what you're talking about because I'm looking at it as, oh, you have a nice outfit. I'm going to save it to a fashion board. But if you just strategically say, like have copy or text on the pin image about what this content is and maybe a stock um, image that relates to the content, then I know I'm going to this piece of content. And that's very key is that you don't want to use images that are not related to the keywords of the content because everything on Pinterest is searchable. Their AI system can pick up on everything. So if I have something about like how to get started on Pinterest and I have a picture of a cookie, 
they're going to pick up on the cookie as well. And it's going to put that keyword of cookie with my pin image that has nothing to do with cookies. Wow. Okay. That is so amazing to know. Yeah. Thank you for that. Okay. So before we get started on Pinterest, we need to understand we have to have somebody, some place to drive people to, and we have to have really clean visuals that relate to the content where we're pushing people to. Yes. So okay. if you don't have anything that's like really related, I just say stick to plain, simple images. Um, if you go on my account, you will see what I mean because I keep my my pins very simple and easy so that I can create them really fastly. At the end, I want to make sure we share your Pinterest you. account so people can go look at it. Okay, so let's talk about, you said that there are three keys to creating Pinterest-worthy content. What are those? So you want to make sure that it's content that you can link to. So this is something that you can link to off your website, not off your website, off of Pinterest. Mm -hmm. So if it's like, once again, like we already kind of talked about it. So you want to yeah. drive traffic to your website. So you want to make sure that it's something that you can put on your website. So if it's a podcast, you can embed podcast episodes on your website. Um, same thing for YouTube videos and things like that. So can you send traffic to your website? You want to make sure that it is valuable and actionable because people go to Pinterest to search and discover something. So they have like a pain point or maybe even a pleasure point that they're looking for and they're there for a reason. So I want to make sure, or you want to make sure that when they're scrolling and they're searching for something that your pin stands out to something that's going to, you know, give them an answer to their problem. It's going to give them some kind of inspiration. It's going to make them click. So you want to make sure it's valuable and inspirational. Um, because it's kind of like if you post about like five things I did today, I'm on Pinterest. I don't care. <laughs> I don't get on Pinterest to find out what you ate today. Right. <laughs> right. So like, even if you have to, let's, we'll, we'll go with eight, five things I ate today. If that was like your pin title, no one's really going to click. Like they don't know who you are. They're not there for that. But if you say something like, um, five vegan snacks to start that I, um, that I eat throughout the day or something like that, something that can, if somebody's looking for vegan snacks or something like that, they're like, oh, let me see some of the snacks that they're eating. So that will make them interested or, you know, invoke curiosity or something like that. It's not just about you. It's about the content. So always keep that in mind for, um, which is another tip is like, make sure you're keeping in mind the content and not you. So what we like to say is that people on Pinterest do not care about you. It's a hard fact, <laughs> but it's very true. They don't care about you. They care about the content that you are creating. They are there for the content. People don't come on Pinterest trying to figure out like what you did today. They're not really coming to even see like who they're following. Like they're literally coming for the content that they're going to find on Pinterest. So always keep that in mind. Can I just stop you there for a second? Um, this is very different intention than why somebody would get on Instagram or TikTok. Yes. You get on Instagram or TikTok to like, like feel the relief or let the, let the entertainment wash over you or to connect with your friends, see what people are up to, but not, it's not like you're, you mean, you might like find new laundry detergent on Instagram, but like you didn't go there for that. Right. So, and then you follow people specifically on Instagram for a reason, like you, you know, you're going there, you know, you're going to see them on your, your timeline, like. Yes, you know, you can go on like the reels and see different people now and find people different ways, but it definitely is a different mindset for these platforms. I go on Instagram, TikTok, you know, yeah. and Pinterest for different reasons. Um, usually if I'm going on Pinterest, it's like I'm typing in something into the search bar yeah. because I'm there for it to search for something. Um, very rarely that I'm just scrolling. There are people who just go on Pinterest and scroll, but they're still looking to be inspired. Or, or find something maybe they don't know what they're looking for maybe you know because um pinterest their smart feed um it updates to your last searches so if i just went on there and i was searching for like a recipe for something now when i go back on i'm going to see a lot of those recipes so if i was to go on there and scroll i'm going to be seeing recipes okay. uh based on my my previous searches so i'm still kind of going on there for something that i just don't realize i'm going on there for but yeah definitely different um like different mindsets between the different users. Yeah, you know, this Pinterest inside and out, this Pinterest platform, it's amazing. Okay, so what's the third thing, the third key to creating Pinterest worthy content? So what did we say? We said to make sure you go to your website, just to recap, mm -hmm. make sure you go on your website, make sure that it is valuable 
And also you want to just make sure that you are thinking about the content. So those are the three things. So think yeah. about the content first. Um, and I think I have a bonus one. I always forget this one. <laughs> I'm like going through my list in my head. I know. <laughs> like, I know there's one more. Um, but yes, we'll come back to it back home um, okay. if I think of it. But yeah, those are the main things. So is that you want to just make sure you're thinking about that. It's really what I like to say is like keeping Pinterest at the forefront when you are sitting down to create your content, because mm-hmm. if I'm creating content, um, like I'm thinking already like, okay, will this content make sense for Pinterest? Mm-hmm. If it's like, yes, it's more than likely also going to make sense for my social media platforms. If yeah. I'm going there to like bring value as well. So when you think like that and you put Pinterest at the forefront, you know that your content is already Pinterest worthy. It's something that's already going to go on your website easily. It's something that's going to bring value to someone. You don't have to think about it. You just already know. Okay. So given that you just really laid out for us what we should be thinking about intentionally when we're designing our content, what do we need to think about when it comes time to like use Pinterest in terms of either scheduling or using the platform? What are, what's the other side of it? Keywords. Okay. <laughs> um, that's like a This I think is part. where people freak out. Yes, for some reason. Um, that's like that's like a big freak out. Um, a lot of my students inside of my program, they're always like, oh my God, the keyword research is where I like struggle. Mm. So like for me, I made sure to have like a keyword database that I add to all the time based on like their different niches just to help them out because it can be a little scary because it's not just like, oh, I'm gonna go and find five keywords and I'm done. It's like no, you need a lot more keywords than that. Um, it's probably going to scare the entire audience. Like a hundred keywords is what I would tell you to start off with, because wow. this is how we have to think about it. If somebody goes on some Pinterest and types in, um, how to get started on Pinterest, that's one way they can type it in, but they can type in also like Pinterest tips for beginners. They can type in Pinterest for business. They can type in, um, what do I need to know about Pinterest, Pinterest pinning tips, all these things are about getting started on Pinterest. Right. So I want my content to show up on under all those search terms. So I have to make sure when I am keywording my content, which is my pin image, my pin title, pin description, that I am putting these keywords in that description so that it can come up in those search results. So okay. that is like the main thing is that you want to make sure your profile all the way down to your pin images that you're actually putting out there are keyword it with different keywords that people could be using to find your content. So when you're saying keywords, I'm also hearing key phrases or key sentences. So it can be very much lo- like long tail keywords um, mm-hmm. that we say too as well. So it depends on your industry and how people will come to type something in. So somebody might type in how to get started on Pinterest or they might just type in like get started on Pinterest. So you want to have all those things, they probably won't just type in Pinterest or Instagram. They're going to type in more of what they're looking for. Okay. Um, but you want to think of both the long-term keywords, long-term keywords and, um, or long tail and the short tail keywords all together. You want to think of all of those things. So I can just hear my audience saying, oh my God, this sounds like so much. I don't know what my keywords are. This is freaking wow. me out. Forget <laughs> it, forget it, forget it, forget it. So how, how can people get started figuring that out? The keyword portion? Yeah. Definitely start with going on Pinterest. So it seems like a lot, but it actually once if you know your audience and if you know like your content and your pain points, it makes it a lot easier. So what I usually tell people is look at your last 10 pieces of content. If you have 10 pieces of content or up to 20, however many um, is possible in that range, look at those content and then pull out your main topics. So what are you mostly talking about? I heard someone say, um, principles, like your key principles. And I was like, I'm going to start using that. Sorry, guy. He teaches TikTok anyway, but (laughs) it was completely the same thing because, you know, in ways TikTok is kind of like, you can search more things on TikTok than you can on Instagram and stuff like that. So, um, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna start using principles because I like that. But your key principles are the things that you mostly talk about over and over and over again. So once you have that, you want to take those and start going onto Pinterest, typing them into the key, um, the key bar or the search bar mm-hmm. and seeing what is coming up from there. You can start doing your own keyword research. So it's not as hard as it sounds. So like, say if I type in like Instagram marketing mm-hmm. and a whole bunch of pins come up, I'm going to start looking at the pin designs 
and seeing what keywords they have on their pin images. So somebody might have like Instagram tips and I didn't even think about using Instagram tips or somebody might have like marketing tools and I didn't even think about using marketing tools, but Instagram is a marketing tool. Um, and that might be a word that you didn't think of or a phrase you didn't think of, but it, it is something that you want your content to fall under. Um, like social media marketing, um, social media tools or tips or techniques, all those things will be keywords that you will start seeing just from people pin images. And then you're just writing them down and keeping track of them mm -hmm. somewhere where you can have always have access to them. This would be a great thing if you have a VA to task that VA with, teach that person how to do this and then yeah, start it's not, getting some support. It take, but maybe like an hour or two, mm -hmm. um, depending on how deep you want to go and how many main topics that you have. But it shouldn't take you that long because you're just literally writing and jotting, writing and jotting. It's mm -hmm. really like, what I learned is that I will come on Pinterest sometimes and I'll see a keyword that I didn't even think about. And I'm like, oh, let me go look deeper into that one really quickly. Um, and maybe I'll get like 15 keywords in like 10 minutes because it's not, it's, it's SEO. People have to remember it's a search engine. So you have to use keywords in order for your content to be found. If you're not using keywords, then you're not positioning yourself correctly on the platform. Yeah. And, you know, this is definitely something that, that goes in the intention bucket, you have to be intentional about it. But if I, I wish people could think about like, how can I create a more intentional piece of content and stop thinking I have to churn, churn, churn a blog a week. In fact, just yesterday I was talking to a friend. She has a blog. She, she says she puts about 20 hours every time she writes a blog into her blog and her blogs are very dense and filled with keywords, filled with a lot of, it's very visual and that's her main content platform. And so I got on a call with her and I was just like, let me show you how to kind of repurpose some of this stuff, like so that we can get more juice out of it. Mm -hmm. And she just hadn't thought about, about that. And I said, what if you just wrote one, because she's got years of blogs, right? Like she's got a lot of content already. I said, what if we scaled you back to writing one blog a month and then repurposing that blog, but all the other blogs that you have. And Pinterest would be a great place to start repurposing. So if you're like listening to Presh talk and you're like, oh my God, there's so much to do. Yes, but stop doing more and just do better. Yes, I love that because um, I talk about being on the, the content creation hamster wheel because I've heard people talk about it a lot. Like they feel like all they're doing is creating content that no one is ever finding, no one is ever seeing. And it's like, okay, well, you have all this content. Why are you, why are you not like repurposing it? Yes. Why are you not maximizing it in a way that works for you still? Because no one, like, even if you take an old blog, change the title, switch things up. I, I'm pretty sure no one's going to be like, I, I read this I read blog that already. three years ago. We see the same content all the time and we're supposed to, that's what we, for, we forget. It's like, I always tell people I had, what I had to teach myself is that I had to look at other people that I admire and I aspire to be like, and look at their content. And I'm like, they literally talk about the same thing over same thing. and over, over and over. And I don't ever mind. I didn't listen to them talk about the same conversation like eight times. And here I am for the ninth time. <laughs> like, and now I know it, but I'm still listening to it. I and totally it's like, agree. but there are people here in their audience who are hearing it for the second time or the third time or the first time. And that's okay. Because the thing is our expertise is in what we keep talking about. Yes. And it's not about recreating or, you know, recreating the will or having new content. It's about learning to repurpose that old content because that's just what it is. Like I will literally repost an Instagram post from three months ago and no one will blink an, an eye. And if they do, oh, well, I don't care because this is my life and my business. And I'm going to not just keep having to find new ways to write something. So definitely if you have 20 blog posts, especially that it's so much Pinterest content that you can have going out there. And that's for people who, who um, people will be able to find your blog posts for weeks, months, years to come. And that's the thing that I love to touch on is because even though like you could be sitting here right now, listening to this thinking, oh my God, that's a lot of work. It's a lot of foundational work. Yes. But once you have a system in place, it becomes a lot easier. And the thing is that Pinterest is a long-term marketing strategy to help you sustain your business and 
your content that you're putting out there. So it's not going to work overnight. It's going to work for weeks, months, years to come. That's why you can still find people blog posts from six years ago on Pinterest. And that's what you have to think about. It's like, where am I, where is this going to help me in my business and my marketing in the long run, it's going to work amazingly for you. I love that you said the long run, because I wish more people would think that marketing is a long run. Marketing is a marathon. I know that there's a bunch of bullshit people out there who are promising us, like you do my program and in six weeks you can, you know, make six figures and all that bullshit that's out there. But Instagram is long-term. Networking is long-term. Speaking is long-term. Like none of this stuff happens overnight. It's all based on we hear it coming to be in relationship with you. Yeah. It, even like, you know, people, I think people look at Instagram, they, they can see things quicker. They can see like if someone, you know, went to their bio yeah. or interacted with them on stories and things like that. But like you said, it is a long game. There's people who, you know, if you've been building up your Instagram for a long time and, you know, you finally start getting the traction, you don't see it as much on Pinterest. Like you don't see the return or the, the, um, things changing as quickly because it's different. It's the way it works is completely different. Okay. So you have to know what your key performance indicators are that you're going to watch to see how things are working over time. Yeah. But I always tell people, if you want something quick and overnight, Pinterest definitely is not it. Even with ads, it's still not it. Yeah. <laughs> so you have to learn like, how can I um, make this work in my business? But it's more of those things that you work it slowly, you incorporate it slowly while you still have something else that you are able to get that more quicker results like Instagram or something like that. Because how I see Instagram is that it's a very much a nurturing platform. It's there to nurture your community that you're bringing in. Pinterest is where you want to get people to notice who you are bring them in with your brand authority building content and they're going to come into your you know your universe or your space and then you can take them where you want them to take them next so I like that so Presh how can people kind of get into your orbit and find you so that they can start following you and start learning from you online yeah so definitely follow me on Instagram and Pinterest at Presh Rogers so I'm pretty sure you should put in the show notes but P-R-E S H. I forgot to spell my own name. <laughs> P R E S H um, R O D G E R S. Because people love to leave out the D on my last name. I don't know why. I mean, my parents. <laughs> and um, if you are interested in, uh, I have a training. It's called the Three P's to Pinterest Success. Um, how to turn your content into cash. So you can find that, and I'll make sure she has the link. But it's just pressrogers.com forward slash um, three. P.S. So like three P's. We're going to put those in the show notes. Great training. If you are really interested in learning, like how can I actually understand Pinterest a little bit more? I love that. Thank you for your generosity today, because I think we're not, I I think that we get so caught up in like create, create, create. I call it a dread mill. You call it a hamster wheel. It's the same freaking thing. (laughs) But um, if if we could just encourage people to be more intentional and slow down and do, and what I always say to my, I always say to my 15 year old, like, just do better. He's like, I don't know what that means, mom. Like, but we're telling you today, do better, not more. Just do better. Yeah, now. it's like, take that content that you've already worked so hard on and be like, how can I make this work for me? Instead yeah. of like, always feeling like, oh my God, I got to create a new caption or do something new. It's like, you have all the content. What can you do with it now to make it work for you for the long run? Because especially like if you have a podcast or something, a lot of times you don't talk about your episodes past that week that it comes out. Like maybe the same thing for your, um, your not podcast, your blog posts or your YouTube videos. You just, yeah. you know, they come out, you promote them that one week on Instagram or wherever you are. And then you move on to the next one because you're thinking I got to move on to the next one, but it's like, people can still find their old content. They can still find a lot of value in that. So you want to make sure that you're putting it out there on a platform like Pinterest where they can find it whenever they need it in their journey. People hear or see things three, four or five times, like you said, eight times. It's because they like you, they like your stories, they like your voice, and they probably need to be reminded of that thing that you're saying again and again and again. So don't be afraid of that. Lean into that. I had to learn that myself because I used to be like, are they tired of hearing this? And- you know what? We get bored <laughs> with our own stuff. I always say that to my clients. You're going to get bored with your stuff way before your audience is going to get bored with your stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So can you give us the link again to your homepage where people can find that free training? 
Yeah, it's www. I don't know why I said www. I do too. Like, like it's the 90s. I always say www like it's 1997. <laughs> Pressrogers.com forward slash three P as in precious S. Nice. And Pinterest. Thanks, Pinterest. Mm-hmm. Thanks. <laughs> I love it. It's like we're drunk today, Presh. I don't, I mean, maybe it's, you're- it's, it's early. It's before 11 o'clock. I've only been drinking water today. I'm not so. drunk, I promise. Um, thanks, Presh, for coming on and sharing with my audience all of these gems because this is just another place we can ring the hell out of our content and put it to work for us. Yeah. yeah. Thank so you, my I, I loved it. I love it. Love being here. And I'm obsessed with talking about Pinterest, though. I can tell. I love it. <laughs> I love, I'm obsessed with talking about content in general. I love that you're super specific on Pinterest. All right, yes. Prash, thanks. If ever, And if you are wondering, can Pinterest work for you? Please go check out the links in the show notes. Prash is very generous and follow her on Instagram too, because she's also fun. So yes, <laughs> thanks for being here. Bye everyone. Thank you.